All right, then let's look at some applications of uh, the antiderivative process. We're going to look at something which is commonly referred to as the initial value problem. Initial value problem. Because uh, what we're asked to do is we have to first find an antiderivative. But the, what we've been doing before is we found the general antiderivative. What we want to do now is find a particular antiderivative because what we know we want to find our function f. What we know about it is we have its derivative. We also know it goes through a specific point. And that's what we mean by this initial value. Uh, so as sort of like an analogy here, we know how fast something's going and we know where it's located. So therefore we can compute its distance function. Um, let's say I was trying to drive um, from Cedar City, Utah, where I live to visit some relatives in Boise, Idaho, which I do on occasion. And so my, 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 my relatives give me a call and of course I wouldn't answer it because I'm driving, but maybe my wife answers the phone um, and they ask us, or, you know, my wife will put it on speakerphone so we can all talk or, you know, something hands-free, totally safe there. Uh, but, you know, they ask us, oh, where are you? And we're like, oh yeah, we're driving 80 miles per hour. We'll be there soon. And it's like, okay, that's great. Uh, but, but where are you? We don't, we, knowing your speed's not enough to know when we're going to get there. It's like, oh, oh, we're in Salt Lake right now. Uh, it's like, okay. Uh, you're driving that speed in Salt Lake, and I know Salt Lake speed limit is not 80 miles per hour, but it's Utah. If you're going 80 miles per hour, you're going slow. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, if you know the speed and location, then you could determine, oh, okay, you're going to be here in like five hours. Okay, okay, that's that's good to know. Um, so we could determine where you'll be if we know your speed and your location. So for this initial value problem, to find f of x, we first are going to calculate the antiderivative of the derivative f prime of x. Well, we know what f prime of x is. It's this 6x squared plus 4 dx. And using the antiderivative power rule and other properties we've seen, the antiderivative will look like 6x x cubed, excuse me, the power goes up, divide by 3, plus 4x, plus a constant. Don't forget that constant there. Um, if we simplify the fraction, 3 goes into 6 two times, we get 2x cubed plus 4x, plus c, this is equal to f of x. But this is the issue that my family member was having. If I don't know where you're located, then I don't know how to finish this problem. And this is where the initial value comes into play. Because this initial value, 1, 1 is on the graph. That means that when x equals 1, the y coordinate will be 1. We have this relationship that f of 1 equals 1. Um, if we plug that into this equation right here, we then see that f of 1 equals 1, but we can also plug in 1 for x, so we get 2 times 1 cubed plus 4 times 1 plus a constant. Uh, I'm going to slide this down, slide this up a little bit. If we simplify, well, the left-hand side is still 1. The right-hand side, we get 2 plus 4 plus c. This will equal 6 plus c. And so let's subtract 6 from both sides here. Uh, we'll end up with that c equals negative 5. And so that's then our function, f of x equals 2x cubed plus 4x minus 5. And so we can determine the exact value of that plus c. And if we had forgotten the plus c, we'd have the wrong function right now. Uh, let's look at another example. So suppose a particle moves in a straight line and has an acceleration given by the acceleration function a of t equals 6t plus 4. Um, we also know its initial velocity the velocity at time zero is negative six centimeters per second. We also know its initial position. It's located at nine centimeters at the beginning of the problem. Let's find S of T. Well, the position function, uh, how is it related to velocity and acceleration? Well, velocity is the derivative of position, which means position is the antiderivative of velocity. And acceleration is the derivative of velocity, which means velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration. And as acceleration is the second derivative of position, that means position is the second antiderivative of acceleration. So we're gonna start off by finding the velocity function. Let's do that first. So velocity is gonna equal the antiderivative of acceleration, which by the formula we're given, the acceleration is 6t plus four centimeters per second squared. We're gonna integrate that thing, uh, for which we're gonna get 6t squared over two plus 4t plus a constant. Uh, simplifying, we see that the velocity is going to equal, because 2 goes into 6 three times, 3t squared plus 4t 
plus C. We have that C again. What are we going to do with C? Well, like we did on the last example, because we know the initial velocity, uh, we can plug that in for the velocity right here, and we can solve for this constant. V of 0 is equal to negative 6. Well, then we plug in 0 for all the T values. So we get 3 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0. It's always generous when they give you 0 there. Because the right-hand side will just simplify just to be C because of all the zeros there. So C is negative 6. And therefore, our velocity function, V of t, will equal 3t squared plus 4t minus 6. And now that we have the velocity function, we can then look for position. Because position, S of t, will equal the integral of velocity. It's the antiderivative of velocity. And so taking the antiderivative of this, 3t squared plus 4t minus 6 dt, uh, by the power rule, we're going to get 3t cubed over 3 plus 4t squared over 2 minus 6t plus another constant, a plus c there. Um, I'm going to just use the same plus c as before, um, even though we already had a plus c. But again, it's just a constant we have to figure out right now. And if you remember from what we saw above, the initial position was s of 0 equals 9 centimeters. And so we set this equal to, uh, I guess I should simplify this thing a little bit first. Uh, the threes there cancel. And then two goes into four two times. So we end up with a zero cubed plus two times zero squared minus six times zero plus C. And again, because all those zeros, the right hand side, I get to become C. So C is nine. And so to finish this thing, uh, we end up with our position function S of T it will equal t cubed plus 2 times t squared minus 6 times t plus 9. And this gives us our position function that if we know how long the particle's been moving in t seconds, then we'll know it's been moving s centimeters, like here. And so we can use antiderivatives to solve many physics problems, economics problems, other examples we're not seeing right here. But it is important that we know that plus c. The plus c is, if by forgetting it, we're assuming the initial value is 0. And when the initial value is not zero, that can be a problem. So thanks for watching uh, this video here today, uh, lecture uh, lecture 41 in our series about antiderivatives. If you have been liking our videos and liking this the, these calculus uh, lectures so far, please like them. Um, subscribe if you want to see some more updates in the future, or if you want to see more videos. Uh, please post any comments. If you have any questions about any of the things you see here, just post them in the comments below and I'll be glad to answer them in the future. Uh, I will see you next time. Bye.